Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And David Imel and I were able to go to the Qualcomm campus in sunny San Diego for a couple of days recently, and Qualcomm brought us out along with a number of other media outlets to share with us their announcements that happened right before MWC, which is where we are at right now. Now, Qualcomm had a couple of announcements regarding 5G internet, their roadmap for creating the infrastructure, and also what they believe that 5G could become for consumers, and we want to express our excitement for it but I'm gonna go ahead and do that a little bit later while I bring you a vlog style video just kind of showing you what we got up to at the Qualcomm campus there's also going to be a bit of a demo later on in a couple of different settings regarding the Snapdragon 835 and the capabilities that it has as well but first we arrive in San Diego and we meet up with Qualcomm themselves now our first day was basically a long presentation. That was the first maybe four hours before and after a bit lunch, uh, where we were just being told exactly what 5G would mean and how Qualcomm was going to leverage what we have already while creating new infrastructure and bands in order to make 5G a reality. Now, I understand that a lot of this is very low level, and by that I mean they're going to hear a lot of jargon, there's going to be a lot of terminology that might go over many people's heads, but for the general consumer, the reason why this ends up being very exciting is because we're going to see a speed increase unlike any other in 5G, coming from even 4G LTE, which we are using right now. Imagine for a second that the speeds that you are enjoying, whether it be on Verizon or T-Mobile or whatever the case may be, can only really get to about 20% of what Qualcomm expects to be gigabit LTE. Now that's only going to be one facet of 5G and essentially the whole point about 5G is not just the speed but also the reliability. There were a few demos that they showed us that showed that the Wi-Fi connection or even the mobile internet connection that they were putting out to a van that was running around the entire campus was able to switch between all of the different nodes without any drop in signal or speed. And even then the signal was much wider given their implementation and that is something that they hope 5G will be able to bring to the masses. Now, 5G also has another very important application, and that's going to be for things like IoT. Essentially, you will use a 5G network uh, that has a very reliable connection to be able to power all the different things in your life, whether it be in your home or even just with your cars. A video showed us a demo that showcased self-driving cars, and while it does probably use the same sensor arrays and the same self-learning that a number of other cars and concepts currently do, what was important in this demo was knowing that the cars were communicating with each other. A 5G style connection would be emanating from every vehicle, and let's say there was a car that would be stopped in the middle of the road and your car is autonomously driving towards it. Now, in order to avoid a collision, the information that's coming from the stopped car would connect with your car and then the car that you're in would be able to avoid it accordingly. The autonomous driving example was also kind of shown to us via drones. Now, these particular drones were given a platform that allowed them to communicate with one another and to signal to the rest of the group that the path would be safe, which meant that they went around these barrels and this obstacle course in a rather slow manner, but over time they would start to speed up knowing that the path was clear. Which brings us to the Snapdragon 835, and we got a couple of demos showcasing its abilities when put into the right devices. Now, the 835 is going to be somewhat vr centric in the sense that uh, Qualcomm is heading up a accelerator program in which they allow companies who want to get into the VR space a kind of template, a sort of guideline that will allow them to create wonderful VR experiences uh, that hasn't really been standardized yet. However, one of the best parts about this VR platform is the fact that it is able to do spatial recognition thanks to the processing power of the 835. Putting this chip inside of a phone that allowed for spatial recognition via the cameras on the back allowed Qualcomm to create a VR experience where we could actually walk around and you don't need the different sensors that you would expect from things like the HTC Vive. We gotta tell you, it was a pretty nice experience being able to put on a mobile VR headset and be able to duck or stand or sit or be able to walk around a particular scene, much like on the HTC Vive, and that is being powered by a phone. 
And in order to get all of the data that the application and the phone itself would be able to process via its sensors, well, they had to find every single plot point that a person might actually take inside of the VR space, which meant that a rig like this, a mannequin head that is basically thrown around and put in basically an infinite number of positions, uh, would be able to get the data points that they really needed in order to create a good, immersive, and spatial recognizing VR experience. And with that, we concluded our two days at Qualcomm. We were able to learn a lot about 5G, even if a number of the things they talked about went over some of our heads, but we understood why we should be excited about the future of mobile internet. And then the Snapdragon 835, which we're going to see in a number of phones coming in this year and beyond, uh, we were excited to see that the 835 is capable of so much, and we got some actual use cases from it. We want to thank Qualcomm for taking us out and for giving us full-on demos and actually showing us what their products are capable of, and we really think that Qualcomm has a lot of say into the future of what could be IoT, 5G, autonomous driving, and of course, our mobile phones and beyond. Keep it tuned to Android Authority for Qualcomm and even more in the world of Android. And don't forget to check out our other properties as well. However, when you head on over to AndroidAuthority.com, remember to bring it back to our YouTube channel and subscribe to it if you haven't already, because we are your source for all things Android.